everyone, my name is Jane, and I'm here from Klubovna, and tonight we are here with Gadesha. What's up, everybody? Okay, so, hi guys. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, my first question is, how are you guys doing? We are doing really well. Thank you for asking. For the first time in three weeks, we took the time to oversleep. So we woke up at 11 this morning. We got here uh, around four. So it was the first time in many, many, many days that we took the time to sleep a whole night. And I think I feel refreshed. Yeah, it's been great so far. I mean, Czech Republic has always been so good to us. So it's always like a family party when we come to Fast Fest every time. I would say that you look really, really happy. I don't know if you're like this, like every time, but I feel like really good energy from you. So maybe the sleep, you should do that more often. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe. <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to get into like the first one. Yes. Uh, you come from Quebec. And there is a quite, um, or is there quite some bigger hardcore scene there? Or maybe do you know some names that are worth checking out? Maybe you can share with our fans? Actually, I don't think the, we cannot talk about a bigger scene in Quebec, Canada, because um, <clears throat> there's not as many people as in Europe and, and uh, Czechia. So, like, we got a great scene though. Like local bands can fill a room of 300 people now only local bands no headliners from the states no headliners from anybody just local bands can fill so i think the scene is pretty alive um is it bigger no it's doing well but not bigger we're doing our own things and we're doing fine uh you got any names that you want uh, people yeah, to check out of course what i like to say is like the Quebec City scene and the Quebec scene in general is like probably the best place in North America for extreme music actually. It's a small scene, mm -hmm. but definitely the most dynamic one. Uh, so we have a lot of good bands, I mean, Scarful, Northwalk and Boundaries and a lot of other bands, you know, which are very, very good. Uh, so we have, you know, that, that, that kind of special feeling like when you go to Quebec, it's really a special place in North America. And I think every band that comes to Quebec always enjoy the moment there. Uh, do you think it's growing? Or... <clears throat> yes, it's growing. What we uh, try to do, and uh, it's all in modesty, uh, in All Get The Shot show, we try to create like a safe space for everybody. So back then, 10 years ago, it was only like a few hardcore kids. But now when you go to a Get The Shot show in Quebec or Montreal, there's like people from death metal, there are people from trash, there are people from punk and even black metal. And so, so like there's a lot of diversity in our scene. Uh, many, many women are jumping on the stage, forming bands. So, uh, yeah, we created like a safe space for everyone. So I think it will grow and people will get together more than being secluded and um, like just, just a bunch of punks, a bunch of hardcore kids and a bunch of metal. Everybody's together doing bigger shows. It's perfect. And uh, you have a feature song with Lionheart. Uh, how close are you and how did the collaboration go? We are brothers. Yes. Like, uh, yeah, we started touring with them when they reformed in 2016 or 17 with the Nasty Tour. We met them over there and uh, then we toured many, many times together. We got along pretty well. We're now close friends. So it was, um, it was, it made perfect sense to uh, just ask Rob to do a song with us. And we're going on tour with them next October with Terror. So uh, yeah, yeah, it was uh, pretty easy. Do you maybe have some similar working process in when it comes to music? What do you mean? Yeah, when you mean the similar process? Uh, you created the song with adding Rob in mind? Oh, I mean, I mean, when I actually wrote this song, I, I, I never had like a featuring in mind, mm -hmm. but uh, it's always like, you know, I know that somebody needs, you know, to take its place, you know, in that part of the song. So, uh, I mean, Rob was a perfect fit. I mean, when I, I wrote it and we kind of worked it out in post-production, I mean, in uh, pre-production, sorry. Uh, it was very, very, very uh, clear for me that was Rob was the best pick for that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we're lucky because he accepted and it was fun. Okay, perfect. Uh, from your, like music, I can feel strong in terms of trash metal and um, it uh, sometimes almost feel like really old school. Maybe did you take some inspiration from 80s? <laughs> from the scene? Yeah, um, 
at first, like, like I will take some words from JP and you will maybe say that again. But um, <clears throat> at first, we don't want to do the same album twice. Mm -hmm. So when we got together 10 years ago, we just made some album that reflect what we are as a hardcore band but then in the van you spend many times and then you try to look back at your record collection and jp brought that trash metal influence that he grew up listening to like some slayers and tracks and old metallica and stuff like that so this is why our sound evolved and now recently our new album that's coming out in october uh we've listened to more death metal like mm -hmm. so as we don't want to do the same album twice I think the death metal in the next one is going to be more influenced. So um, yeah, I say it all. I take your words and I just say it. So sorry about that. <laughs> and do you maybe have like uh, some favorite bands from that era? Oh, from the death era? Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I'm a huge Cannibal Corpse fan. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the greatest band in death metal history. That's for sure. Uh, obituary. Love, obituary, of course. <laughs> uh, the uh, the eye side also. There's a lot of band. I'm, I'm really into uh, also slam death. You know, these days, like a lot of abominable patridity and stuff like that. So uh, it kind of reflects on the new record. You know, it's uh, way, way, way more heavy than what we used to do before. A different sound, but still the same hardcore sound that we used to do. Yeah, perfect. And uh, you talk about it before the interview a bit, but uh, we noticed that you have, you are really straightforward with your fans. And is it, uh, or how is important to you to be real with your fans? And if it's, um, or maybe if you have a line, you're not comfortable to cross when it comes to the shows. And um, I'll just say first, and I'll give you the microphone on that. I think you will be good to, with that answer, but first of all we don't consider them as fans we just consider ourselves as part of a hardcore community so what's great about hardcore and what brought me into punk and hardcore is like there's no line between the people and the band so everybody can come up on stage and grab the microphone and sing as i used to do and uh, so that line that line that doesn't exist it shouldn't exist so that's that's the great thing about about that so the line that we shouldn't cross is like Sometimes I know festival we have to have barriers and we hate that because uh, the people are not I know for security reasons or something but for us we JP is always going to go to meet the people because they're not fans they're like we're still feeling the same about music so yeah that line that we don't want to cross is like having a barriers all the time we will never ask ourselves for a barrier mm -hmm. so you think it's a bit more complicated to do that right now because of the like. yeah of course he's more job for him because he has to jump out of the stage to reach to the people to sing with them and to be with them so this the job is more complicated for him not for me <laughs> and is this like the uh, best thing that you uh, enjoy the most about the concerts like like being like with the people in the crowds and yeah, well, personally, I mean, I, I hate, you know, being far from the crowd. Mm. Uh, I really love what I love about hardcore is that feeling of proximity, you know, with the people. Uh, I mean, the, it needs to have this kind of connection, you know, to create that kind of energy. So every time I play, you know, in huge festival with barricades and stuff like that, I'm always a little bit uncomfortable, so I need to climb these fucking barricades and, <laughs> and then go into the crowd. So that that that's where I feel at home. So that's that's the feeling I try to recreate in every show we play, even though sometimes it's harder than other times. But uh, most of the time at Fast Fest, it's pretty easy, you know, because mm. like I said, this is like second family here. So when we party, everybody everybody's partying right here. Perfect. And I have maybe some funny question or for me uh, i heard uh, that you jp uh, worn some weights on your ankles while consenting is that <laughs> it's not true. that's it's not, not true cute. false okay i didn't know where that came from it's, actually i know it's not weights it's something it's, else? it's, uh, it's protection like it you know just traps ankle? yeah because i broke my ankle oh, so oh my gosh. two times on each ankle you know during tours back in the days so I'm always wearing protection, you know, yeah. when I'm, here, I'm jumping everywhere and stuff, so, and I'm old, so. I'm I was old. thinking that maybe it's somehow connected to the fitness that you think also I don't know. I mean, mean it's, 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 if, if there's a problem and actually yeah. wear weights on his ankle, man, I want to see him yeah. and I want to thank him and make him a high five because he, he must be a fucking beast, man. I couldn't yeah. but, but that's funny how, like, Some rumors. Challenge for you. Yeah. <laughs> 
the weights on your weights. Yeah, but, no. but but I do train almost every day on tour. No, no. Wow. I train before shows, not during shows. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, um, and you've been part of the scene for quite some while, but you only made like three albums. How uh, do you feel some attention to do uh, like some more because some uh, bands do like one album per year? Mm -hmm. yeah. Personally, I mean, I prefer, you know, to release like an album, you know, once, two, three years, but the album is fucking good, mm -hmm. than always releasing some song just to be releasing some songs and it all sounds the same, doesn't have some originality, there's no, no personality, no difference uh comparing to what we did before so I, I i really like to take the time you know to make the songs as good as possible and like danny said before we hate to do the same record twice every get the shot record is a different entity in itself so that's what i'm really really aiming for uh but i i'm not you know uh I'm considering, you know, in maybe the near future, maybe releasing more singles than mm -hmm. actual albums, though, though. So maybe releasing singles more often, you know. Five years was too long, but it was because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. like b between Infinite Punishment and the new ones coming up. It's because the two years of the pandemic, it was supposed to be three years. And we take the time to write as many songs as we can, like really demos, maybe 40 songs before getting to a point of 10 or 11 songs. So we kind of trimmed them down. So we wrote more songs than just the final album. And I was maybe thinking that you're uh, also touring all the time. You've done like many, many, many concerts. So I was thinking that maybe you don't even have that much of time to like really sit down and to make the album. So not it's like a different reason. Definitely okay. not on tour. We're writing where we're at home and we have the mm. time to do it. You not have on like, tour. Uh, some uh, working process, like some rituals that you want to, I don't know, uh, as a band, go somewhere in the woods and make it like separated. Someone We've never done that. We've never oh, done that okay. session, working session. We've never done that. It's like a, a long process of uh, <clears throat> when we're not on tour, we're seeing each other every week. Mm -hmm. one or two time a week mostly one time a week like and uh, we bring new musics and uh, we just play it play it play it until we got something good and we mm -hmm. finish with a song but we never did sessions like uh, a, a month in the wood or something it's like mm -hmm. we have a rehearsal spot our own studio and we just uh, do the work like for many weeks okay perfect uh now maybe something funny on your instagram i've seen a meme with bernie sanders for some he reason, he's really popular in hardcore punk community. Do you maybe know why? <laughs> why? I don't know. I mean, the meme was like some... Uh, it became like a universal thing, you know? It was funny, you know? <laughs> uh, well, well, I don't know. I mean, of course, I mean, Bernie Sanders was defending, you know, more progressive ideas and mm -hmm. values. So I think that these progressive values are very important in our countercultures. I mean, this is a culture of diversity and inclusivity. So, of course, I mean... The progressive values are more, you know, uh, in correspondence with what what we do, you know, as a band, but also as a community. So uh, I mean, there's that connectivity, but I think it's it's more than that. It's just a, a web and internet phenomenon. You know? yeah, I also found like Twitter account that was all the memes with hardcore bands. Yeah, and games. Mm, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, also, uh, on Instagram and visuals in general. Uh, everything is quite dark and somewhat horror-like. Are you maybe into like horrors and true crime stories and that stuff like that, or is it or just a question of style? No, huge, huge horror yeah. fan here. Huge horror movie fan here. I mean, uh, that really you know influenced our aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm a huge Cannibal Corpse fan too. So I mean, okay. everything that's gore, everything that's dark, I'm really, really into that kind of stuff. This, uh, this whole album that we're releasing in October yeah. was really influenced having El Razor in mind. The Clive movies. Barker. Yeah, Clive Barker, El Razor. So, uh, so yeah, we're really influenced by what was uh, happening in the 80s, 90s too. But uh, re more recently, there's good horror films like with a production company like A24, like Edward D. Terry and some n newer movie like that. So, uh, yeah, we're pretty into a horror and dark team. And, Let's be honest, it look better for us. I think we think it's cooler to have a demon or a monster 
than having some funny stuff or angels or cartoons. So this is mm. more like us. Okay, perfect. Uh, your uh, national language uh, is French. French Canadian, and, yeah. Yes. And uh, have you ever thought of making song in French? Not really. I mean, I mean, we there are, there are always people in Quebec asking us that kind of question, mm -hmm. but I mean, I mean, it's an art, you know, to really be able to write a good song in French. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm talented enough to do it without it sounding sketchy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been listening, you know, to American hardcore music all my life. So, I mean, English is like the way to go when but, we, we're mm -hmm. doing hardcore. I'm not saying I'm not, you know, um, doing, you know, uh, French songs in the near future, but I mean, I, I really feel like, you know, the, the French language is such a complicated language that it it takes a lot, a lot of talent, you know, to really, you know, use the, the good concept without it sounding sketchy or sounding weird, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it doesn't have the same, you know, the, the same sound also. So it, it's harder. So maybe I'm just lazy, but mm -hmm. it's harder. And of course, the fact that English is almost understood everywhere on the planet, it helps also to, you know, get the message passed, you know, so. But if you want to hear JP singing in French, he did a, a vocals on a Parjure song, like uh, Parjure is a beat down band, so yeah. from France, and he, he did a collaboration with them, so he sings in French for the first time. Wow, perfect. What's the title of the song, do you know? Uh, Enfant du Malheur. Enfant du Malheur from Parjure. Oh my God. I don't even understand nothing. Yes. It's like really, really different language from... English. Yes, Latin language. Yeah. And fr even from the beginning, you just know that you want to go for English, or you were thinking that maybe. I always wrote in English, yes. so I mean, it's it's always the way I did it. Mm. And French is a beautiful language, and we have other way. Like GP is a teacher, so he he, he used wow. French, and he he's gonna he, he's teaching in French, and I like to write too, and I love to write in French, but uh, I like literature. Mm. But uh, <clears throat> I think uh, my hardcore music sounds better in my ears in English, yeah. for me. I don't get it. Basically, yeah. And uh, we are getting to the end. And maybe uh, because we've been playing here for like several times, uh, can you maybe compare like America versus Europe when it comes to the uh, like people, comes to the fans? Easy. Um, <clears throat> we started coming to Europe before going to like, and I'm going to say America, I'm going to say United States. We started going here. Uh, before because people were more friendly and open and welcoming uh, if you're playing a show in North America most of the time you're only gonna get a little bit of money for gas if you have money then when you come to Europe you always have like a roof under your head you have a bed to sleep mm -hmm. and you have a warm meal every time even small shows offered that so that kind of pr proximity was uh, was easier for us we felt welcome we felt part of the family since the beginning so um this is the main difference but um uh, as if we talk about the show or a mosh pit a mosh pit is mostly the same everywhere but uh but european crowds are fucking crazy <laughs> i mean, yeah, crazy I mean people, yeah. people enjoyed pit action here you know and uh, as far as the music is good i mean people go crazy and have some fun that's what i like about europe you know nobody you know is like pretending to be someone else everyone is just having a good time and uh, that's what makes europe so special i mean people are so welcoming here people are so kind so i mean that 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 might have some kind of proximity with our culture as french canadian we are we are kind of people you know like to welcome people you know deeply and help them and have some fun with them so it's it's a it's a warm culture and yeah. we feel exactly the same when we come to Europe. Perfect. I'm so glad to hear that. And uh, to close this up, uh, what's the thing that you like the most about making new music? About making new music? Or your music? Or your music. music. Oh, I mean, I mean, punching people in the face. Oh. I, I mean, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll be totally honest. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not pretending, you know, that hardcore is such a a very distinctive form of heart you know no not really I, I see that more as a sport like like mma martial arts you know i've been doing martial arts all my life 
I, I sit more like that and I'm my, my only goal when I make this kind of music is making the music as crazy as possible so that can, people can bleed in the pit. That's the only goal I have when I do this music. And of course the live action is where this music really lives, you know? Uh, so there's no scene, no kind of music you know, get, that gives you that energy back, you mm. know? There's nothing like it. For me, it was a way to say, uh, to explain, to put some words on the feeling of anger that I was feeling mm. like all my teenage. Um, I always wanted to say fuck you, but I didn't know why. So now if I'm playing that music, so uh, I feel like I'm, I'm saying to everybody like what I feel really. Like my anger is getting out there and once I will not have that anger in me and, and JP's too, I think I'm going to do it, something else. So for now, I still want to say fuck you to the people, mm -hmm. fuck you to the police, fuck you to the government. So, uh, uh, so I will be on stage as long as I want to say that. Okay, perfect. Maybe uh, because you're releasing the album, you you have a date already. Yeah. Maybe you can say to our fans when this when is they a, yeah we we will uh, announce it really really soon. Okay. So this is um, yeah I'm gonna say it like it's exclusive to you. Okay. Thanks. So we're gonna release it October seventh. It's called Merciless Destruction, coming out on Use the Pride Records in Europe and uh, New Damage Records in the uh, worldwide. October seventh, Merciless Destruction. It's coming. Judgment Day is coming. Thank you so much. Very excited for the show, for the album, and I'm really glad. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you so much.